Hello everyone. Welcome to another Power BI Tips and Tricks video. My name is Henry Dimlo and I'm an associate consultant on the data platform services team here at Velocio. Today I'll be talking about using Python scripts and visuals in Power BI. So first I want to go through some of the advantages of using Python visuals, one of which is the exp expanded options uh, that Python scripts allow that are not available within base Power BI visuals. Additionally, while there is the Microsoft App Source where you can go and download other uh, examples of, of visuals and, and things that people have created, uh, it's not always great as you don't always find a visual that exactly meets a stakeholder's need. And sometimes those visuals are limited by the original creator's intent. Python scripts allow for a user to create and tailor visuals to their own needs, whatever that might be. Additionally, these visuals are especially useful when uh, doing exploratory data analysis, learning more about correlations or trends in your data. And some examples of some of these visuals might be heat maps, violin plots, pair plots, or box plots. So some steps that you need to go through in order to implement Python in Power BI is first, downloading Python, uh, usually or in always from a reputable source but uh, one that i would usually use is, is python.org uh, one of the the main sites of python uh, and so you can see that the link is there and you just uh, can easily go on there and, and download uh, the a python instance as required next what you'll need are uh, some python packages uh, specifically these three data analysis packages so the first is pandas uh, a package used for analysis and data manipulation the next is matplotlib a visualization package uh, in python and finally uh, seaborn which is an additional visualization package uh, all together these three uh, packages really work together to be a very robust and uh, and useful tool for manipulating and visualizing data uh, additionally, each package has accompanying documentation as well as examples uh, of ways to use uh, these packages and creating visuals and, and uh, a gallery of, of visuals that are available as long as along with code uh, that you can use to uh, jump as a jumping off point. So next we will go over to uh, Power BI to uh, go a little bit further into how uh, this is done. So first, I would just want to go to options and settings and look at the Python scripting option. Uh, and here you can see uh, it's Power BI has detected where my Python uh, is downloaded, as well as it's looking at which sort of integrated development environment I want to use. In this case, I'm using Visual Studio Code, uh, but there are many options. Uh, really, you just want to go in here and ensure that uh, your Power BI and Python uh, are both communicating together and working together uh, as expected. Additionally, the first time you use this Python visual, you may have a uh, pop-up that asks if you would like to enable Python scripts. You can just go ahead and enable that and uh, begin working. So what you can see here is that it's asking me to drag fields into the values area. So I'm just going to take a couple of these values and put them, uh, or a couple of these fields and put them into the value area. And uh, from there, I'm going to take uh, some code that I've already written and uh, just paste it in. And so first, I want to bring your attention to this uh, pandas package, which is creating a data frame of postal code region and sales. So basically, it's creating a table with uh, the fields that you've put into the values pane, or as well as uh, it is dropping duplicates here. So uh, just a couple of steps that pandas is taking right off the bat. And then from there, I've already downloaded these matplotlib and seaborn packages. So uh, Python is just importing these and I'm giving it an alias of PLT and SNS. So next, again, I'm going to uh, just pull over some, some code. And here what I have is um, I'm using seaborn to create a category plot that is a, a bar chart with region on the x-axis and sales on the y. So if I run uh, this script, you'll see it display that bar chart. And so after I've done this, I, I might decide that, you know, maybe a different type of chart is, is better for my situation. So I have the option to go in here and just switch it to a violin plot. I'm going to take out this bar chart uh, code and then rerun this. And so what we can see 
is a little bit different view of the data from the bar chart. Uh, from here, you can tell a lot of the data points are, are concentrated around lower sales rather than what it might look like originally where you had the sales going up as high as uh, 8,000 in the east. So this really gives you a better uh, view of where exactly those data points lie and uh, where some of those, those density points are. So along with a violin plot, like I was saying, there are many other plots and together it really becomes a powerful way to look through your data. So here I have the violin plot that we were looking at earlier, as well as some box plots uh, based on shipping mode and category and uh, a relationship, just looking at the relationship of quantity and sales. So here, like we were looking at earlier, the East region has uh, sp some specifically high points. So if we were to take that out, we could see how that affects uh, the other three regions and look at uh, maybe that quantity versus sales has made a change or uh, some of the box plots are different. So uh, the slicers that are native to Power BI do affect uh, your Python visuals and allow you to look further into that data. So uh, one other thing in these box plots I notice are, uh, for example, first class uh, seems to have a, a, a much greater uh, range in the technology category than others. So if we were to look only at first class, we can then uh, see that in more detail. And so maybe that there's an explanation behind this, like uh, maybe uh, technology is more easily broken in the mail. And so it's better to pay for uh, higher class mail and, and have it delivered uh, safely and in, in, in one piece. Uh, or if we were looking at say maybe just one category like furniture you can see that there is a, a very uh, strong relationship between quantity and sales as one might expect but if we were to look at office supplies we see that there is a gap uh, where it looks like many customers like to order uh, a higher amount of of office supplies at one time where others are, are ordering all of their um, items at more frequently so uh, really what this allows you to do and, and what these uh, these plots can do together is really inform you a lot about your data, can help you ask the right questions about your data and help you uh, really start to gain insights about what is going on and, and what is happening beyond just some of these uh, other uh, Power BI visuals. You can really use them in conjunction together and, and create a, a powerful dashboard that is very informative. So I want to thank you all for listen to my session and uh, I hope you all have a great day.